And people have just old boof biomass sitting around that they just, you know, they don't really have a market for. The question I get a lot is how much ratio of like THC to THCA, so how much de how much of that THCA that's been decarboxylated, is it still viable to make it into like a crystallized product? Yeah, good question. THC seems to be one of the most, you know, impeding factors to getting a good crystallization. A good way of looking at it, I uh, typically describe it as is we'll often add a little bit of THC back to shatter to prevent it from crystallizing. And we find that somewhere around 10% uh, you start to, um, you know, inhibit that crystallization really effectively. But one of the good things about running the crystallizer is that you can add more THCA back into the process to ship that ratio if oh, you're not really doing your good crystallization. Oh, uh, okay. And how would you do that? So essentially what we'd do is we would remove the solvent and depressurize the system, and then we would typically vacuum load the powder. So we'd pull a vacuum on the crystallizer, we would pull the THCA in on top of our crude, and then we would re-dissolve it and make it into a cohesive mixture. Okay, so you've got this like vessel full of crude, uh, or yeah, it's not really gonna be able to crystallize. And then you take powder, you add the powder back to it, and then it allows you to crystallize the rest of the isolate that's in the crude. Yeah, exactly. You're you're reducing the impact that the THC has on the THCA by increasing the amount of THCA there is relative to the fact. You're diluting the THC yeah. and increasing the proportion of THCA to TSC. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, one of the other things that we're doing in order to um, crystallize uh, crude that has lower THCA or higher THC is often a slower crystallization will also help us. Uh, so we'll, we'll leave it overnight. We'll get a client to leave their crystallizer cold overnight and, and sometimes it'll crash out that way. The other thing that you can try is to, uh, you know, lower the temperatures on your crystallization, add a little bit more propane. These will kind of help you get a crystallization if you're kind of on the on the edge of where it's going to be possible. But we we see, I think that, you know, in the long run, using THCA to your advantage is going to be the most productive and most uh, predictable course of action. One of the things that's really important to extractors is after they've done their crystallization, they separated the hydrotropin extract. The amount of THC that's left in that high terpene extract kind of determines like how efficient that process is, right? Like if you've got half of your THC still in the high terpene extract, then your crystallization really wasn't that effective and the process really isn't viable. What's as low as you can really get it? What do you think and how do you uh, optimize that? I think that one of the main issues is that when you are performing a crystallization and your crystals form too finely, they can easily be washed away and more readily re-dissolved in your washing solution when you're washing it with a uh, clean U-tip. One of the main ways we mitigate uh, against this is we actually slow down the crystallization deliberately so that it happens almost instantly but over the course of about 20 minutes. And what we found is that allows us to form crystals that are about 100 microns in size. They're a little bit bigger, and so you're less likely to wash them away when you perform your washing step. Mm. And when you say wash them away, it's like it gets redissolved when you're passing cold solvent over the the isolate to push the HTE into the next vessel. That's right. Or if you're using a 10 micron filter, for example, and if your crystal size is five microns, then you're likely to wash them through the filter as well. Right, so by saying clog the filter and clog the filter, yeah. So really a big part of what we're doing when we're controlling the temperature and the timing around the crystallization is we're actually keeping it on, 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 on the edge of where it's crystallizing, but slowing it down deliberately so that we can grow that crystal size a little bit larger so that the filtration steps are easier. The way the crystallization process works is you're getting to super saturation means there's too much THC in a solution. In this case, the, the terpenes are the solution. Once you get below that, that, that threshold, you can't necessarily crystallize any further. That's kind of, there's kind of a limit there. We've got a number of strategies that we use to be able to crystallize uh, low THCA crude. One of the things that we're working on is to remove the terpene fraction without decarboxylation. And we think that that could uh, positively impact getting the last little bit. So like distillation, you're going to get THC at the end of it. It may not be, you know, it may decarboxylate in the process, but you're going to have some, be able to recover some THC at the expense of the high terpene fraction. Yeah, that's definitely an approach, but also stripping the terpenes out of a HDE without decarboxylating will diminish the solvent effect that the terpenes have on our solution. So you can increases the concentration of THCA relative to terpenes. 
That's right. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Yeah. Causing it to precipitate. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys have experimented with a few methods for reprocessing the HTE to get more THC or THC isolate out of the out of the extract, right? And with reprocessing HTE, what we'll do is we'll, you know, add THCA back in to help to get it to crystallize. We'll do the crystallization with more propane. We'll do the crystallization colder, more dilute, or over more time. And um, there's a number of strategies that we can use to get more THCA of the HTE or ideally completely strip the HTE of THCA.